Hi. A few weeks ago, I went to the Central Tennis Clinic in Baltimore. And during that clinic, I felt my forehand was going way off. And I felt the need to try to fix my forehand, but I didn't know how to do it. Eventually, what occurred to me was to go to fuzzyyellowballs.com and go through the forehand progressions to build up my forehand one step at a time. And the reason I wanted to do that was because I felt that there were too many small motions in my forehand that were giving me troubles. So what you're going to see is a video of the first step of the Fuzzy Yellow Balls forehand progression. That first step is to put your racket near the contact point where you're going to hit the ball and just follow through. This is meant to give you a sense of where to hit the ball in front of you. So we're going to see that in just a moment. The first step of the tennis progressions involves you standing at the service line and normally you're fed some very slow balls with a person. I have a tennis twist and it feeds balls just the way I want it to go. The idea is for me to have my racket in the uh, contact position which is pretty much near the service line. What you're seeing, in fact, is me making a mistake. I am actually pulling my racket head back a little bit so that I get a little bit of pace, and that's wrong. I need to just turn my body and not pull the racket back at all. So the first step is just a simple get ready, hit at the contact point, and follow through over the shoulder. And the idea is to do it very slowly and aim for essentially the opposite corner in the opposite service box. You don't want to hit it with a lot of pace. The goal is for you to have good technique. Here I am again doing the same drill, but this time I'm taking the video from the front. It's often a good idea when you're making a video of yourself to have one from the front and one from the back and one from the side. So this is how it looks from the front. My technique is a little bit better than it was in the previous clip. Um, in particular, I'm not trying to pull the racket head back too much. You'll still see that my arm is a bit rigid, even though I'm hitting it very slowly. This is due to years and years of hitting the ball the way I have. My goal is, in fact, to be much smoother with the stroke, but uh, this is how it looks so far. So you see I'm just trying to get a smooth motion, and it's not as smooth as it could be. What you're going to see here is a problem that I have in my forehand. In August of 2009, I stopped making videos. And the reason I stopped was because I was obsessing over the problem you're about to see. I would close the racket face when I was making my forward swing to contact. In fact, I shouldn't even be pulling the racket back at all. Let's see it in motion right now. The ball's coming out and it bounces and I pull the racket face back but then you'll see it just closes and then I move forward and opens again and I want it to stay so that the racket face points to the right during this entire time in fact I don't even want that what I really want is to have the racket face pointed to the net the entire time like I do when I'm setting up right now and I just want to turn my body just a little away from the net to close it up just a touch so I can have some speed when I hit the ball. But unfortunately, I pull the racket face backwards. And, and step one does not do this. You do not do that until step two of the forehand progression. Let's see it again. Notice I'm pulling my racket face back. Notice it's closing right now. And then notice it opens up again. This creates a lot of timing issues that video helped expose and so that's what I wanted to fix in my later clips and you'll see that they're gone in later clips. So, so that wraps up my first attempt at the first step of the forehand progressions. I'm going to go through additional steps and you're going to see some problems there as well, namely the closing of the racket face. My goals 
in conclusion, is to try to understand the forehand. Make it really simple and more reliable and try to remove any extraneous movement that might cause it to be less than reliable. I use the fuzzy yellow balls progressions because it's one of the few resources on the net that breaks down a stroke into its component pieces. And so you too can do this if you actually have to revamp your forehand. I'm a pretty patient guy, so I'm willing to go through these steps. But the video is crucial because it allows you to see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So I believe that all of the steps of me taking video of myself will hopefully lead to a better stroke. And maybe you watching me, you'll get a sense of how you could do it if you wanted to do it yourself. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.